It's my final day in New Zealand, and I'm back on Stewart Island. Big day today. It's time to put everything I've learned into practice. So, a little bit nervous because I'm coming out of my comfort zone. Tonight, I'll serve a Maori-inspired feast to a group of elders with my kick-ass mentor. Monique. Gordon. I survived. Oh, you survived? Oh, my lord. You good? Oh, I'm excellent. Let's just hope this cook goes to plan. If not, Monique's going to have my balls in a vice. What do you got? So I've got my herbs, uh, I've got the goats, I've got the power. Should I light the fire? Not yet. Go on. First, we need to dig the pit. The pit? The pit. Right. Then we've got to light the fire, heat these rocks until they're glowing red. Then we're going to put our food in the ground. Then we're going to wait a few hours. Then we're going to dig it back out, as if it wasn't painful enough to dig the hole in the first place. And then we'll serve the food. Why a pit? Because this is how we do it. We're doing a hungi. How far down? Two feet. Stop it. I'm not kidding. Dating back to their ancestors in Polynesia a thousand years ago. <laughs> this is crazy. The hangi is a traditional Maori method of cooking food in so, the ground. You've gone eeling. Yeah. You've gone goat hunting. Yeah. You've gone diving. Yeah. You've gone into the forest. You've discovered all these amazing things about New Zealand. Are you ready for tonight? To be honest, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. Now that I'm digging a pit to cook my goat in, you didn't tell me at the beginning of the week that we're going to be digging a hole and cooking in a pit. I always like to leave a few surprises. Confident? Yes. Oh, that was... <laughs> One hour of hard labour later, we're ready for stage two. We are flaming, girl. This is going to burn for two hours, so in the meantime, we'll get all our stuff ready to put in the pit. Time to get cooking, starting with my mountain goat and those fiery leaves we foraged from the forest. Right, Monique, uh, what are you rubbing your uh, goat with? The jalapeno? You using jalapeno on yours? Yes. Me too. Nice and spicy. Nice and spicy. That's going to be the pepper flavour in there as well, right? That's right. In my kitchens, I use foil to wrap meat, but that's not the Maori way. All right, no tin foil, no worries. We're using puka leaves. Do we wrap veins inside or outside? Uh, inside. To stop the meat drying out during cooking. And harakiki flax to tie them together. That's one done. I mean, it's a little bit prehistoric, but it's done. Right, next one. I'm just going to check this real quick. Oh, oh, I think it's coming undone, Chef. Not tight enough. I know you might want to start again. Bloody house bows. It looks easy tying these things, but it's not. You know that. Just like your shoelace, Gordon. Right. I'm sure your kids could do it. Holy mackerel. Fragrant and highly strung, and that's just me, our goat goes into baskets lined with aromatic herbs. The sweet potatoes in as well. Sweet potatoes in, and we'll just put them in the gaps. Oh, man. Heavy, huh? Yeah. So, too, are the now red-hot rocks. How hot is that? Must be 1,000 degrees. <sighs> All right, we're almost there. Now let's get the food on. Like that. Next, the pit is covered with soaking sacks to create a primitive pressure cooker. And then... Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, That's the... the steam starting. If you weren't sick of your shovel... Finally, because I haven't been punished enough already, more shoveling. Yeah. I've met some hard workers in my time, but Monique oh. is on another level. If there's ever a cook that complains about the stove, I'm sending him to you. <laughs> what an amazing technique, an underground oven. There's no cavity wall insulation, there's no digital clock to set the timer. <laughs> there's no convection. You've got a <laughs> hole, baby. So there's no freaking way I can have a sneak peek at my goat. No. You've buried it. Ashes to ashes, Your dust to dust. Your food is in the hands of the gods. May it rise deliciously. <laughs> I've never felt more like a fish out of water than I have today because I can't touch anything. I can't double check. 
for that level of perfection because that's it, it's in there now. And uh, roll on three and a half hours because if, that, if that's not cooked, I'm done. Can I go and lie down, please? We've got some sides to do. Oh, oh my Chef. Lord, you are relentless. Chef, come on. And surprise, surprise, Monique's side dishes are hidden in an unusual place. Where are we going? We're just going for a little walk in the forest. Something tells me she isn't making coleslaw and fries. We need to find some hoo-hoos. Some what? Some hoo-hoo grubs. Some hoo-hoo grubs? Yes. They live in fallen wood, rotten wood. Here we right. go. And the, they'll be in here? They'll be right in the middle. It's a big market for it in this country. Seriously? It's almost as expensive as caviar. And is it considered as a, that much of a delicacy? It's that much of a delicacy. Girl, you've lost it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Too much time in the bush. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just keep cracking some of these open. Ah. Oh, there we go. There oh we God. go. Native to New Zealand, hoo-hoo grubs are the larvae of the longhorn beetle. Oh, yeah. That's a great A, I reckon. You grade your grubs? We grade the grubs. Stop it. Yep, and I'll happily pay 180 to 190 for one of these. Really? Yep. Oh, that's a nice fat guy. Monique. Yeah. Monique. Don't they look delicious, Gordon? They do not oh, look delicious. Yes. So they taste of? They taste of peanut. I know that does not look like a jar of peanut butter. We don't eat it raw like that. Yeah. Like, that's its face. So some little, little spikes. Yeah. So those might bite you on the way down. So you don't want to start there. You want to pinch its face and eat its tail. So pinch this end and pinch. bite there. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll go first. Please. OK. It's final feast day in New Zealand, and the menu has taken an unexpected turn. Great. Mm. Wiggling around. Mmm, these are really good. Really creamy. <laughs> My team. <laughs> they are disgusting. They're so good. Peanut butter. Your yeah. peanut butter must be different to my peanut butter I grew up with. No, mm. that is not for me. No. I'll show you. I'll show you how they can be used. Yeah, the only thing that's nutty mm. would be the person eating them. We'll soon find out. While Monique pounds those gross grubs into a pulp to make a creamy sauce, I crack on with my next dish, with another ingredient from my travels. One of the dishes that I'm super excited about is the eel, because getting those things was incredible. So I'm just going to grill this with a little ginger Cherokee glaze. Manuka honey, how exciting is that? Next, I'm going back to the fuchsia to make a chutney to accompany the goat with those beautiful berries I picked from the top of the tree. So I'm caramelise the garlic, shallots and ginger, a little bit of raw cane sugar with some butter. I'm going to use the peppery jalapeno leaves and then I'll drop the berries in. Do you want to try the hoo-hoos? May I? Go for it. See now, the taste of peanut. Exactly. See? How can it be so delicious coming from that disgusting, rubbery bug? At the risk of sounding like an animal undertaker... Is that going to be ready? Looks ready to me. It's now been three agonising hours since we buried our goat. That smell is incredible. It's almost like we've opened the oven door. Two, three, and again. Great. He came out of there. There we go. The question is, is the goat goat? Oh my god. Look at that. Seriously. Um, it's almost time to serve our Maori feast. Right. Our honoured guests are arriving. 
They may have mixed ancestry, but make no mistake, they take their Maori heritage very seriously, especially when it comes to food. Wait, are you still cooking? Yeah, sorry, I'm going to be super quick, OK? Literally 30 seconds, please. With kings of the ocean, Zane and Fluff at the table, I'd be thrown to the sharks if I didn't cook them some hand-dyed power. Oh, God. Soon if we don't hurry up. That was just tenderising the power, by the way. Come on, come on, hustle. I'll be 30 seconds, I promise. Literally 30 seconds. You're staring at us. Are they? Need to move, need to move. I know, I know, I know. Right, coming out the pan in five seconds. Five. Four, yeah, hold on, my three, two, one. I am ready. Alongside my pan fried power, my goat with fuchsia berry chutney, and with my teriyaki glazed eel, I'm serving a raw salad of wild forest herbs. To accompany her goat, Monique's made her signature hoo-hoo grub sauce, Mary potato flatbreads, and hangy steam pudding. What a day, and when you experience cooking like that for the first time, it becomes even more special because it's special ingredients for special people with a special young chef, and then the uniqueness of it, because you start with those raw ingredients that are hand-sourced, and then you stick them in the ground, and all of a sudden, this whole thing comes to life, and you start taking in this culture that has been a tradition for, for centuries. The question is, have I done it justice? I've never been so nervous putting something into a hole and waiting three and a half hours for it to cook <laughs> because I'm a control freak. So did I pass the test? Yes. 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 <laughs> Everything is superb. The goat with the sauce on it, that's, that's mm. incredible. That. Yeah. And the power is to die for. The yeah. deal was just yeah. really good. It's probably just been a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon did an awesome job. He's picked up a lot in a really short time about mouldy ingredients and mouldy cooking techniques. I didn't think a Brit would pick up our way of doing things so fast, but he's impressed me a lot. Spending this week with Monique has been amazing because in many ways she reminds me of myself at 31. The difference between her and I is that I was trained in a modern European style and she's trained in a Maori style and this connect together has been a wonderful lesson. Fluff, apart from half the food in your beard, <laughs> you save you saving <laughs> that for later. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favourite part? Uh, it was nice and centre. When the uh, tohu grab sauce on looks really nice. If you're ever in London, <laughs> you're more welcome to come and join me at my restaurant for dinner. I definitely will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here in New Zealand, I've discovered unique ingredients. Wow. That's delicious. And learnt ingenious cooking methods. So that will burn, that will steam. Yeah. Which deserve to rival some of the finest food on the planet. It's almost like a sacred cuisine, and they have every reason to be overconfident, but no, they take the opposite route because I think deep down inside, the Maoris don't want this secret out there. But they've inspired me, and I'll carry this inspiration with me wherever I go. This is it, the final cook. And for me, it's time to give back, understanding what these trade winds have done for this incredible island, but more importantly, give back the way the island is given to me, because it's been amazing. Let's hope I do the foraging, the diving, the hunting justice, no egg on my face, and give them a meal to remember. Five days ago, Chef Sheldon sent me off on my journey. Now, it's time to show him what I've learned. Sheldon. Hey, what's up, Sheldon? Hi, bud. Good to see you, my man. Hey, man. Oh, you're alive. Alive. 
<laughs> Barely. Still kicking. Yeah. Uh, what a week. Uh, bloody brilliant. You got to meet a bunch of my friends and the yes. people of Hana. Now I get it. Yeah. The trade wins. Okay. What it means, but more importantly, this bounty of produce. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, you started. I started, which I've been slaving away. I even built a fire already See. for you. You make me feel bad now. Uh, huh? it's, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm <laughs> okay. going. What's All that right, called, sure. by the way? No, so we're, we're cooking in, a, in the emu, the fire pit. And is it going to be hot enough? <laughs> you feel it on your balls, don't you? Is, I can't feel <laughs> <laughs> now I can, yeah. Huh? Roasted testicles is the least of my problems. Sheldon's clearly in his element. If I don't step up, I'm toast. What's your centerpiece? I'm gonna be cooking ulu. Hulu? Ulu. Oh, breadfruit. Ulu. I forgot, I gotta keep on going back to the layman's term for Yeah, I'm sorry, here, so. yes. <laughs> okay. Sheldon is cool as a cucumber, but I'm really feeling the heat now and not just from that fire. What's amazing about this, I'm actually just gonna bury it underneath the coals. Oh, really? Yeah, and it'll steam in itself and we'll cut the skin off and it'll be beautiful on the inside. How will you finish that off? First thing I made you do was forage for those uh, sea urchins. Yes. So we're just gonna top it off with that. Wow, 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 wow. While Sheldon cracks on with his traditional dish, I let him know how I've decided to put a British spin on Hawaii's finest food. I'm going to use breadfruit as well. Okay. Like an incredible mashed potato for the cheap cuts from the deer, the belly, the neck, the shoulder, and make like a... Don't go crazy now. Look at that face. Almost like a shepherd's pie, except we're not using lamb, we're using deer. All right. You've uh, come to Hana to cook a shepherd's pie. No. It's, it, it, uh. it, it, it's, it's going to be a different take on the shepherd's <laughs> okay. Imagine a shepherd's pie with the most amazing venison in there. All right, I guess I have to just see it. <laughs> Sheldon's not hot on my pie. That's a worry. I'm running behind, man. Trust me, the taste will blow him away. Ooh, that's hot. Huh? Yeah. Bloody hell. I don't think that needs turning up. I'm going to fry up all the vegetables first okay. and then add the venison to it. That is so hot. For his main course, Sheldon's preparing one of the weirdest fish I've ever seen. What's that fish you've got there? What's that called? This is uh, opelukala. Kimmy got this beautiful shot on it. And you cook it whole like that? So we're going to cook it whole, kind of in its shell, so to say. Right. Uh, it has this crazy leather skin. That's incredible. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Feel how, how rough it is. Yeah, it's... yeah, it's almost like a dolphin. <laughs> Holy <laughs> That's hot in there. <laughs> oh, Sheldon. What are you doing to me? So far, I'm the only one cooking. All you've done is stuck it on the fire and laughed at me. I think I've watched one of your shows. You said, work smart, not hard, <laughs> chef. So. Yes. Do you mind just giving that venison a little stir, please? You checking the seasoning on that? It's definitely seasoned, chef. Yes. A little bit too much salt? A touch bit. What was that? Is some of that uh, the charcoal kind of popping, telling you to uh, hurry up. <laughs> Dodging flying embers, I crack on with my dessert. I've got big plans for that Hawaiian staple, poi. OK, now possibly for one of the boldest things I've ever attempted. I'm going to make a poi custard. A poi nakata? A poi nakata. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly that. <laughs> so I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of a whipped coconut cream. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Uncle Wade had some words to say to you in the taro patch. He wasn't doing your part, man. I know. What's that guy like? Honestly, <laughs> my toes are still caked in mud. What a character, though, huh? <laughs> Do you think Wade's going to like this? I mean, there's only one way to, to see. Yes. <laughs> I can assure that it's never been used in this form before. Really? Let's hope he likes it. It's not long until all the guests arrive, and I'm really up against it. You good? Yeah, I'm going to get some of this, uh, this, this lobster on the grill. Stop it. You're not cooking, are you? I'm actually cooking, oh, Chef. Oh, my lord. So ginger, garlic, uh, black bean, that's a lot of flavor. We're going to tone that down with some coconut milk. Beautiful. And you grill the lobsters, and the lobsters go inside. I've still got to make the topping for my Hawaiian shepherd's pie. Breadfruit is cooked. So you can slice that with the butter. That's beautiful. So that is now ready for mashing. I 
At last, I can start my final dish. More of Robin's deer. Seared loin steaks glazed with soy sauce and lime. But before I know it, I guess I'll sat down and are waiting. Everyone who's taught me about Hawaiian cuisine is here to taste my take on their food. No pressure then. Chef, you ready to serve? Yeah, ready to go, boss. Finally, my feast is finished. Shepherd's pie made with venison and breadfruit mash. Seared venison loin with breadfruit gravy. And for dessert, poi panna cotta with kukui nuts. Crush it. Yeah. But Sheldon's also pulled out all the stops. Opelukala fish in seaweed and lemon sauce. And spiny lobster cooked in spicy coconut with breadfruit. Topped with a fern and sea urchin garnish. Yeah, let's go. Aloha. Aloha. Am I pleased to see you guys? <laughs> Let me help you. Oh, hello, Yes. The back of those incredible trade winds that have helped put this unique cuisine together, I thought I'd bring a bit of a wind from, from Scotland. So this shepherd's pie, this is my take. Uh, enjoy. Please, all of you, dig in. Ah, amazing. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> What an amazing insight to unlock all those incredible secrets to understand what true Hawaiian cuisine is all about. Phenomenal, because it's multi-layered and incredible, from what the ocean gives you to what the mountains deliver on a different level. What do you think is going through their mind right now? Uh, I, I could tell you what, they've never had shepherd pie <laughs> made with <laughs> local venison. And... Oh, yeah. Don't worry, you know what this meal is music? It's like holy, holy chicken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fingers crossed, one little treat as a parting thank you, really. Um, I took that poi, turned it into a poi cotta. Now, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. But, see, yeah, I've got thick skin, so I can take it. So, please, jump in. I'm going to wait till the man takes one spoonful over there. Oh, wow. Oh, you got the thing. It's Gordon. It's Gordon. You got the thing. Oh, no, ba. Ah. Here you go. Delicious. Number one. Ah. Number one. It's all good. Well, at least I like my poina cotta, but now it's the moment of truth. The Hana community leader, Kaui, delivers the verdict. And Carrie, what's the uh, general consensus? The venison was really soft and it's nice taste. And then heads up to Sheldon with, you know, stuff that we are super familiar with, the opelukala. The lobster was nice and refreshing, <laughs> but I think overall, we all agree that that shepherd's pie was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, comfort food. Flavorful. A little bit on the salty side. <laughs> you called it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing day and great feedback from not just experts, but proper islanders. That, But for me, a week of a lifetime. Uh, you've been amazing, bud. Thanks, Chef. Thanks, man. <laughs> right, on to the next adventure. Good luck, bud. Good, Good to see you, man. God bless. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Thank you. During my week in Alaska, I've excelled at not catching hypothermia, fish, or game. But now it's time to meet Chef Lionel to prepare our feast. Hopefully, I'll have more success in the kitchen. Lionel! Good! Hey, you're alive! <laughs> I made it, bud! Oh, how oh, was man. it? Oh, my God. How was Una? Crazy. Uh, no salmon yet. Apparently, Joss said he's on his way. OK. But what an experience. Yeah, what'd you learn? I scaled a uh, chimney rot that was windy and waving, uh, okay. crumbling as well. Uh, the most amazing glacier ice. And then, you know, on this incredible uh, hunt for grouse, uh -huh. salmon, and then got to meet uh, Owen from the Tlingit community, who oh, literally gave us this sort of A to Z of a seal. I'm not okay. too sure if that's going to play in my restaurants in London, but <laughs> you never know. Fingers crossed that salmon arrives soon, because it's freezing out here, and the guests will be arriving any minute. Everyone keeps telling me that Alaska is all about survival. I just hope I can make it through this cook. Hey, Gordon, how you doing? Good to see you. I'm all happy to see you. Yeah, I brought you the king that you have so desired. For that beauty. Thank God Josh came through with that salmon. 
King salmon had to be the main staple for this cook because when we get our hands on those back in Europe, it's a surprise asset. I'm serving this incredible wild salmon three ways. Right, I'm gonna cut them into the most amazing portions. It's hours old, you know, it's, it's good enough to eat raw right there and then. And look at that belly on there, oh my God. Wow, that's some beautiful king you got there. Uh, it's amazing, honestly, thank wow. goodness for Josh. But look at that, look at I mean. That. That's beautiful. My first dish is Gravelax. I'm making a marinade of spruce tips, juniper berries, and gin. I'm actually gonna cure that in the snow. Who needs a fridge in this temperature? Oh, no, that's pretty ballsy. Yeah. Lionel makes a start on his first dish, a traditional seafood chowder. Really beautiful swap rounds. Just peel them down to the tail. I may have agreed to cook outside to embrace the Alaskan spirit, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. Right. Oh, it's not too uh, bad. That's not too bad. It's not too oh bad. My God. You'll be fine. I'm gonna have to keep on coming back in here to defrost my fingers so I can feel them again. You know that. Lionel continues preparing his chowder, adding the halibut cheeks and octopus and searing them in pork fat. As I prepare the cure for my gravelax. So I made this really nice paste, season it. Salt, sugar. Then Lionel heats up his homemade fish stock. And my boozy marinade is ready to layer onto the salmon. So I'm gonna cover that in there. I've got that really nice sort of wild, mountainy flavor in there. One perk to cook in El Fresco, this. Stashing the salmon in the snow for an hour to chill. For Lionel's second dish, he's smoking black cod in the smokehouse for a harvest board of Alaskan treats. Smart. Smart. Nice. So I'll put my salmon uh, belly on the bottom. And for my second dish, I'll be smoking the salmon belly to layer onto my pumpernickel toast. Unimpressed with my toast, Lionel is now whipping up a homemade loaf to go with his seafood stew. So this is about ready to rock and roll. I just wanted to show you. I'm going to go ahead and um, shape it and then put it in the, the cast iron. So you're going to bake the bread in open fire? Correct. Yeah. Amazing. And will it be as crusty? It'll be really crusty. His loaf may be delicious, but I've got the perfect ingredient guaranteed to get the Alaskan seal of approval. Right, I'm going to toast my bread now. So I'm going to literally get this pumpernickel bread and I've got some of that seal fat. Oh, exciting. So I'm going to grill that on top of there. It's lightly smoked as well, by the way. Whilst Lionel checks the seasoning of his stew, I'm making a spread for the toast out of horseradish and creme fraiche. I'm using some of that blood orange as well, OK? Do you need help with anything? Uh, no, you seem sort of calm, collective. I'm the one running behind, but we're getting there. How's that bread? Oh, let's check it out. Oh, wow, look at that. Wow. That is incredible. You wow. have got that crust on there, haven't you? Nice and hot. That's amazing. Oh. Nice. Huh? I'm now cooking my final dish. And yep, you guessed it. Salmon again in a beurre blanc sauce served with potatoes cooked with Owen seal bacon. So I've got some of this seal bacon from Owen. What do you think? That smells really good, Gordon. Does it? Thanks for being out here. Mate, you're welcome, honestly. I know you're freezing your ass off. I have froze my <laughs> ass off all <laughs> week, man. Oh, my God. You cold? Let me hear. No, no, honestly, let me, I'm let fine. Me, let me, no, I wore trust my favorite me. shirt No, no, for no, you. honestly. I'll get there. Stop it. I'm serious. Honestly, my mum's no. watching. Oh, come on, here, here. Honestly, here. I'll be fine. It's I'm getting. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. toughening up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm taking it back because it's <laughs> cold. It is <laughs> freezing. Behave yourself. Delicious. Oh, hey, the guests are here. What? Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, oh, welcome. no. Seriously? Thank you. I'm out of time. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. So I need to distract the fishermen. The only way I know how, alcohol. Let me get them a drink. Damn. Can I help you with anything? No, honestly, we'll be fine. All right. So to kick off a meal like that and celebrate with an incredible gin, local gin with those uh, ice cubes harvest from that glacier. Uh, 
It's the most perfect but simplest cocktail on the planet. <laughs> Hello! Hello! A little gin and tonic. Help yourself. Oh, wow. Please, gentlemen. Uh, cheers, by the way. Cheers! cheers. Time to plate up my salmon dishes. <laughs> Gravelax with honey mustard sauce. Smoked belly on pumpernickel toast. Grilled salmon served with spruce tip beurre blanc. And potatoes cooked with Owen's seal fat. Up against Lionel's harvest board of smoked meats and his fire cooked loaf with seafood stew. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, man. There. Uh, it is freezing. Come on. Yes. Excellent. Tough one. Cooking for a table of fishermen that really know their stuff. There we go. Also, they get to taste this kind of ingredient on a daily basis. I mean, all the stuff on the charcuterie tray, there's a lot going on there. Have you had the soup? Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, it's like that umami thing going on. We're all getting well? Yeah, I think everyone is, is enjoying and everyone is smiling. Have you ever got salmon that is cooked to perfection, where it's undercooked slightly? And you can see that orange in it. You know, you can leave it kind of raw in the middle and serve it like tuna. And it's like... Delicious. Yeah. Very good. When he sees that salmon so many ways, yes. for a guy that hunts on a daily basis for salmon, yet he's still excited. Yeah. It's so good to see. Fish. To fresh fish. 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 Hey, hey. Fresh fish. fish. It's judgment time. Wow. Yeah. Hey, guys. Good to see you. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, my God. Man, I'm going to take my hat off for the first time oh, wow. all day. We good? We've really been enjoying good. it. Yeah. It's almost all gone. <laughs> <laughs> We're just being polite. That is that a happy problem. What did you think of the Gravelax on the watercress? Um, a little salty. Right. But focusing on the uh, spruce tips, yes. really kind of balanced that out a bit yeah. um, after I took a second helping. How was the stew? I just didn't feel like it really fit well. Man, that was a tough one. Sorry. That, 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 that yeah. was delicious. And I was just the opposite. I just felt like all of these different flavors came together. It had that whole umami thing going on, and I just loved it. How was the salmon? Most of us never buy salmon in a restaurant because it's usually overcooked. Mm -hmm. And that was cooked to perfection, and that needs to be a feature somewhere. It was yeah, amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Everybody yeah. appreciated it. Well, it didn't overcook it. So, do you guys feel like he's captured the spirit of Alaska while the time that he's been here? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 oh boy, uh, I've had a fantastic week from a chef's point of view. Getting that close to the sauce, we say it on a daily basis: the better the ingredient, the little it needs doing to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and Alaska has literally come up trumps uh, uh, from my culinary world. So, awesome. can I come back? Yes. yes. Oh my gosh, please yes. do. To you. Cheers. When you're closer to the action, like I've been all week that makes it so much more magical. But then the stories of being mauled by a bear and hunting and surviving out here, and just how tough it is, it's pretty difficult.